Hey, everybody. It's season two. I'm Jacob. This is my podcast. All right. Welcome back, guys. Season two. We made it through a whole season, and then we had like three bonus episodes, and now we're already back into season two. It feels like it's literally just been, you know, not very long. Feels like it was yesterday. Yeah. We weren't actually here yesterday. No, that wasn't some. Sorry. It wasn't an insider insider secret. Well, before we get into this week's topic, which I think we're going to spend some time diving into Grace Mm -hmm. and the series that you've been sharing, um, I just wanted to kind of take a few minutes and give people an update. I mean, the last time we were in here recording, you were very close to baby time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what has happened since then? So we had the baby. Awesome. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, We had quite the experience doing that. A story for another episode, I promise. Um, my five-year-old went started school. Started school, and that is just the hardest thing in the world. Yep. So he's actually in class with with my Emma. Yes, with Emma and with Eva and, and with, with Eva. Eva. Yeah, really. Yeah, we have we have kids so, all in the same class. All right, How weird we is gotta that? Take a break. <laughs> the crazy thing here is when I was going to school, there was a McKinney, mm-hmm. uh-huh. a Ferris, uh-huh. a Needham, and a Sheriff. Whoa. And we were all best friends. <laughs> and now, again, no, there was a McKinney, a Ferris, a Sheriff, and a Needham. Wow. Back in the same class. Wow. That's pretty cool. That is crazy, man. <laughs> I had not realized that. The, yep. the kindergarten class is a is a really interesting class. It is. Mm-hmm. It's big, too. Yeah. But yep. a lot of a pure group have kids in the same class. That's yep. like the class where there's like a centralized, uh, a, a heavy uh, amount of kids that are all together and it's a big class. Oh, Two yeah. teachers. One of them being was Miss Hammerson. Miss Hammerson is starting her twenty first year yeah. of teaching kindergarten. That's wow. crazy. And I ask her, I've got one more kid. You think you got it in her? And she's like, <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame her, man. So I'm like twenty one yeah. years of kindergartners. Kid, I've man. got I've got one. One is one seems overwhelming. Oh I know and I imagine it only lasts plus. for a year. Yeah. 21 years of five-year-olds. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and really every crazy. year, graduation, she just... <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> just love them so much. And, yep. and like, I tear up. And That's like, a call. Emerson, I love you. I'm so glad you teach my children kindergarten. Yes. That is a calling for sure. Yeah. So, Jacob, with you, there's been some changes as well. So, our first bonus episode we released, mm-hmm. we got to get a peek behind the scenes of yeah. the crazy living situation that uh, that you guys were in for a while, but that's no longer the yeah, case. No. So this is an update. It might be worth maybe a bonus episode again of bringing us all back together. But we recorded that when we were seven months into that journey. At 10 months, almost to the day, uh, we said like, okay, like it's time to sell our house because this may be another episode, but... I had just felt for the last couple of years a, a pullback to Durant. And so I felt like I need to move to Durant, but I know better than to force anything. So I move on God's timing. And while I'm thinking that, we invite Abby and Austin to live with us. And so I'm like, well, obviously this is delayed a little bit, but um, within about a month and a half, maybe about a month and a half after we recorded that episode, that's when I felt like it was time as we were encroaching on summer. I felt like it's time. So we moved out in a week um, and they moved to your parents Mm -hmm. for a while. And uh, we packed up our house, put it on the market, had a contract in a day. And actually today, the day of this recording, (laughs) We are finally going to close uh, after months. You know, in between all that was Jubilee, which we can talk about all the stuff that's happened since la- season one. But yeah, so they don't live with us anymore. Yeah. And um, that's sad, though. They're yeah. going to start after all those well, stories. Here's, so, here, so here's the truth of the matter <laughs> uh, the house we're, we're getting in Durant, um, it's, we, we are able to get more land in this. And it's a beautiful property that we're really excited about raising our kids for the next season, the next leg of our, you know, family life. And, um, there is a way we could arrange it that if uh, Abby and Austin's build, they've been they're building a house, it gets delayed too much. I told them 
yeah, we've done it once. We can do it again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so maybe, maybe a sequel to this. Uh, so there might be this family comedy outnumbered <laughs> part two. Nice. We'll see. I don't know, but yeah. So well, that's that's changed. Congratulations on finally reaching the closing date. Oof, I know it got yes. pushed a few times, and that yeah. was frustrating. But yes, it that's was. Awesome. That's okay. Everything we've done up to this point has been on God's timing. I don't know exactly why it got delayed, but I'm just trusting that God knows what he's doing. So, yeah. So we close today on selling our house, and we'll close in two days on buying our house. That's awesome. And that is awesome. Yes, it is. Yep. It being so, in, but just, so we recorded a whole episode based out of that moment that that mm-hmm. many of us were in but i know i was in about being in between mm-hmm. and i didn't i don't know if i ever gave exactly what the situation <laughs> i was in that was putting that in the pressure cooker mm-hmm. for me but it was being in between houses yeah 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 so yeah it was tough that's awesome man mm-hmm. and it's cool um well starting a new season of life of being in a different place, starting a new season of the a podcast. podcast. Oh, yeah. I see what Man, you're doing there's there. a lot of starts, <laughs> a lot of new things. Um, mm-hmm. Well, let's uh, let's jump into the, the topic, right? So you've yeah. been sharing on Grace. Um, I have. And Grace Unlocked has been the series. Mm-hmm. And now whenever this gets posted, it's, it'll, it'll already all be, be done. done. And, and you can go back and listen to it if you haven't. But um, I... I know this topic is is very near and dear to your dad, to Absolutely. our church. It's mm-hmm. something that we've we've grown up, you know, hearing. But sometimes it's just great mm-hmm. to hear it again mm-hmm. and in a different way or in a, from a different place. And yeah. um, man, we co- need constant reminders yeah. of how uh, how so much of our life and in in our walk with Jesus is so totally dependent on Him. Um, mm-hmm. And whenever we shift our attention away from that and we start trying to do things on our own, I mean, we, we, spend, we even spent a lot of time in the last season talking about disciplines and yeah. rhythms and, mm-hmm. and things that, and even the temptation to turn those into works or right. things that we have to do to sort of control. Mm-hmm. Um, it, for me, even the first two, ep- the first two episodes, <laughs> we're going to start calling your sermons <laughs> I episodes. I did that earlier with the sermon. I was calling it a season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A series. The, the so, first two sermons in your series <laughs> have just been episode one and two. A refresher, even to me, of just like remember that you are not in control, yeah, and that you need Jesus again and again and again. Mm-hmm. And then I find myself getting frustrated at myself for not getting it. And then it's like, oh well, you're striving again to try mm-hmm. to get it. Mm-hmm. So just stop. Rest in who Jesus is. Rest in His grace. But let's talk about that for for a bit, like. What in the process of even preparing your mm-hmm. messages, what things has God been stirring in your heart uh, for our church and just for for you, for your family, things yeah. like that? Well, this is um, grace for me acts as like a center of gravity of how it it's like a filter to see scripture through, to see my relationship with Jesus through. You don't have tons of those. You probably only have two or three of those that act as like that filter or that center of gravity. And so grace is one of those for me that um, my dad was growing in his ministry in a season where that was very misunderstood. Um, he he had to fight in his the, – the area of influence God put him in, he had to fight legalism. Mm. And uh, – like we, we joke about him being a, a David, that there's just too much blood on his hands to <laughs> build a temple. We joke about that a little bit, David Solomon. Um, but but he did, like he had to fight legalism and was called a cult. He was called a heretic. He was called all sorts of names in our area, in other areas, when he'd be a guest speaker in other churches. There's churches that would kick him out. Uh, so, I mean, like you had to go through a lot. So he had to like fight for this doctrine mm-hmm. of grace. And there wasn't a lot of people preaching that, um, ministering that. And uh, the doctrine of it had somehow gotten lost or just put in this little capsule of doctrine. And so it was something that means a lot to him. And for him, it was through the filter of identity. It was a lot of how he he processed that. And so I grew up with that 
idea, those doctrines. He parented me with that concept. Mm -hmm. And so I look at that and like, okay, this is a piece that I can't let our church lose. Now being responsible for the, um, for the leadership of our church, I can't let this get lost. And so, I mean, a, a common phrase that I use, I, I'm sure it's attributed to somebody, but we need to be reminded more often than we need to be instructed. There needs to be instruction. There needs to be teaching. There needs to be new information. You need new knowledge. But the process I did on the podcast and I've taught about inspiration, revelation, integration, integration requires constant reminding. So this idea for grace is one of those that like, it just we just have to keep in front of people and um what kind of spurred it on i'm always thinking about this john 1 14 if it's not my favorite verse it's one of my top favorite verses that talk about the glory of the lord revealed in jesus through grace and truth so like that's been very important to me for a long time but um we go um into jubilee and uh andrew Walmack is teaching from Romans 12 about that grace gift and the assembling of the church and that being unlocked. And what I was hearing the Lord is like a season of commissioning, a season mm -hmm. of go, like just one word was resonating inside of me, go, go. And so, okay, well, well, that will mean like we need to release people into ministry. We want to make sure they're released, ready for that, not harbor them or hold them until everybody's at a certain maturity level. But if you're saying go, they need proper equipping and we might not be able to do a training program, but if I can get them at least some basic ideas, that's enough to keep sustained. Grace is at the very center of that. And then uh, honestly, and so I haven't, I'm, I'm this weekend when we record this, this weekend I'm doing part three, which is going to be from second Corinthians nine. Um, and uh, as actually my dad's offering talk mm. at Jubilee where I'm standing on the side of the stage and uh, he's he he reads the scripture, and I don't know what he said after that, <laughs> because when he was reading it, uh, like I was getting this little trigger, and uh, I like subtly pulled out my phone, and, I, <laughs> and I, I couldn't write a note, so I just text my wife, remind me about this uh, when I sit down, and I slid it back in. And so I've been so kind of meditating. A on little that further me. insight to the sermon prep process. Sometimes you just got to be ready to respond yeah. when uh, when inspiration when, when it hits. And actually, <laughs> and, and and it wasn't necessarily directly related to grace. What it was is in the in Second Corinthians nine verse eight, where Paul writes, and he may uh, or no it, verses before that he says not to give out of uh, compulsion or obligation. And for whatever reason, when my dad read that. I. I heard or I was thinking about, okay, that's the filter to discern how to give in grace. Mm. One is an internal drag and one's an external drag. And so like I was seeing this, like how to recognize when you're giving not in grace is when obligation is an internal, like I feel like I have to, that's mm. an internal pull. Uh, compulsion manipulation is an external pull. And so the only, the only way to discern a giving in grace is when those two pulls aren't there. The pull is for the kingdom in grace. So I'm still thinking about that. I still got a few days to sermon prep <laughs> on this, but um, that's where that came from. And so it was the phrase, and he makes all grace abound mm -hmm. in second Corinthians nine, eight, that was like coming out of Jubilee going, okay, I'm just going to talk about grace. But then when I started preparing, I realized my temptation to go to doctrine. And I'm thinking like, I know I've only got three weeks on this message, on this mm. series or this topic. I can't explain this in three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I could feel the the tug of the Lord. Um, mm. Don't explain. Like, don't, don't focus on the doctrine here or all the meticulous nuance of this verse and that verse and how this connects to that. Like, just preach Jesus. And so that's where the first message was grace as a person. That's where that came from is if we're going to understand grace, you can read all sorts of books and I encourage it. You can have all sorts of doctrinal understanding and I encourage that. Don't miss what grace really is at its very center. And that is the person of Jesus. Mm. So that's what I've been fleshing out and intentionally not over preparing for my messages. This series, there's mm. times for that, but this series has been very much, I read through common verses around this and just meditate on it and meditate on it and meditate on it and then 
open the Bible and preach. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a great series. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of stuff. So we kind of touched on it a little bit early on, but the idea of, we've been hearing this message our entire lives mm-hmm. and there's always something new to get out of this. It's one of those things where internally, when I hear we're doing a series on grace, I'm mm-hmm. like, again, like, <laughs> Haven't we done that already? <laughs> like, it's not a it's not a rude thing. I'm not. Uh, yeah. It's not, and I'm yeah. not being. I, I don't know, but you, you get what I'm starting to say. Yeah. But even in this, there was something in your last session or sermon. Episode. I I, why am I having such a hard time remembering the word? Sermon? Your last TED talk. Your last talk <laughs> to us. Uh, you said something that I hadn't thought about before, and that was that there's a grace for the things that we're weak in, but there's also a grace for the things that we're strong in. Mm -hmm. And when we are working in those things that we're already strong in outside of the grace, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I just never, Mm -hmm. I always thought grace is is where I'm lacking Mm -hmm. and and where he supplies, Mm -hmm. not like, oh, it's also where I'm, I'm I'm efficient and Mm -hmm. I'm good at these things. I also still need his grace. Mm -hmm. So I don't, it's been, it's been a really great, uh, I can't do it again. Almost that season. It's been, uh, a great, season. It's, it's been great. It's, it's been great. It's been a great season that That's we've been in. Just listening and no, uh, yeah. Anyway, I I mean I totally agree. Um, that that was a that was a reminder and a and a inspiration revelation moment for me of just how often I depend on my own abilities mm-hmm. and I don't feel. Uh, the need, or maybe I'm, um, I just, I don't have an awareness cultivated of how much I need grace, even in my strengths. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the longer I spend sort of relying on my own skills or talents or natural ability, the less that I'm paying attention to how much, even in those, I'm needing Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I noticed just sort of a, a pattern, and maybe this is, this is just me, but I know um, for me, like coming out of seasons like Jubilee and we had the 10 days of prayer coming up, you know, right before that, um, a temptation that I, or and, and this is something that I've wrestled with for a while, is that I tend to go through seasons like that, get really um, invested and energized and focused, but I don't realize that in the moment, a lot of the times I'm running on my own, um, out of my own well or my, my own reserves yeah, rather yeah. than in the moment drawing on grace to even pull me through those, yeah. se- those seasons. And so I hit the end of that and it's just like crash yeah. Oh, yeah. and I'm just tired, but I don't know how to recharge because I've been, uh, in this zone of sort of just, you know, just taking one day at a time and just like, you know, trying to, to just, get through the day and uh, Jubilee, it, this is mo- more so in Jubilees in the past. The last few years have, have been less so for me, but there's still this temptation. Like we hit the end of a, of sort of a mile marker. Mm-hmm. Like you get to the end of the sprint and you really give it all. Yeah. And then you just want to yes, crash, just crash. And the temptation in that moment is, Oh, okay. I've done all of this, this, uh, you know, this focused effort, pursuing God's presence, just being in worship, doing mm-hmm. all this. And now I kind of don't want to do that. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's the opposite reaction. Or I need to react in the opposite way is like, I get to the end of something and that's the time to throw myself on grace mm-hmm. to, to dive in deeper into my need and my, my reliance on God rather than, okay, I needed your help through all that, but I got it now. Yeah. And now I'm going to, you know, for the next few days, uh, just veg out on whatever <laughs> and <laughs> veg out. That's such a dad thing wow. to say, isn't it? Like, you don't want to go veg <laughs> out. But anyway, um, for me, the timing uh, even of, of your series has been great because it's just this reminder of I don't have to, I don't have to strive, obviously. I mean, yeah. And, and there is this a little bit of this duh. I've heard this. I know this, but why? Why am I not living this? Yeah, try preaching mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I'm, I'm like, I can imagine. Everybody knows this. Everybody's yeah. read this. Yeah. Everybody's heard this. That's, I'm not saying anything new. Yeah. That's, that's that's a huge temptation in speaking is novelty, mm. um, because novelty 
makes you look good, makes you look smart. Uh, it, it makes people excited about hearing you because like, I've never heard that. And I mean, it's really cool when people say that and you makes you feel really good. And so there is a temptation is like, I have to be novel. I have to say something someone's never heard. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, no, I mean, tying off my last message, I realized that's a temptation to pride mm. a lot is the desire to impress people with novelty and that's not relying on grace. And so like it, I have in my personal notes, um, note to myself, and then it was a journal entry when I was preparing the series itself is an exercise in grace. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, I want to explain, I want to over, over, honestly, just overdo it. Um, and uh, or be meticulous or give an angle that I know no one's ever given. And <laughs> it's, it's like exclusive look at yeah. grace. <laughs> so it's like, hey, that that verse that everybody reads about it all the time, go back there. And then like, okay, all right, well, what am I gonna say that's new? Just go there. Mm -hmm. Is like what I'm what I'll hear, or like just the the word the for the first message that my personal like as in my personal prayer about it. The Lord, there's a verse in Psalms, Psalm 81, that says, um, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Mm. And so I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> it means like, open the Bible, then open your mouth and I'll fill it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's a terrible idea. Like, And I'll like, okay, well, that's lazy studying or whatever. And honestly, it's just come down to... I'm going to trust the Lord. I know what's inside of me. I'm going to meditate on these verses day and night, and I'm going to open the Bible and we're going to see what comes out. That's good though. You're, you're putting to practice those, those memory verses we had to learn when we were children. <laughs> <laughs> trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh -huh. Lean not on your own understanding. Uh -huh. In all your ways, acknowledge yeah. him. He will direct your paths. Yeah. Look at Josh. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the whole Bible verse, like the ABCs. Yep. Like, I turned that into an app one time. That's a story for another day. But yeah, yeah you did. I it's did. Good it was fun. Whitney was the yeah. reader. Is this yeah. app still around? I don't think you can get it anymore. Ty and I made it like a long time ago. But like maybe like, first iPhone? Yeah, yeah. First or second iPhone. What in the world? We were so early on iOS, in the, uh, with like iOS 1. Yeah. We were early on in the app development. The stuff. OG yeah. Flappy Bird. Yep. Well, can't get it no more. No, no, Everyone flap, wants no more it. flappy board, bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I, maybe this will be helpful for some of the people listening uh, just as an encouragement. Like one of the things that I think really has connected well in your messages is the stories that you've told. Um, yes, the, the teaching is great and it's sound, but whenever we can connect the dots to real life and like mm -hmm. how we walk this stuff out and, even learn from each other's seasons of less graceful uh, living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's encouraging uh, and and helpful. I know for me, a, a story or a season maybe I can share is just like this recognition of my temptation is to achieve or to earn so much, mm -hmm. um, and it's been that way ever since I've been a kid because I grew up as a smart kid. I did well in school and. Everything in school was sort of geared towards that achievement, earning. Yeah. You do your your work, you get this reward of a good grade or of a, hey, you're the at the top of the class or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was I began to recognize in my adult years after graduating school that so much of my um, wiring was built around that need to earn and achieve that it was very tempting to to just live in this place of only operating in things that I was gifted in or only like looking for chances to do things that I knew I could do well mm -hmm. and not living from a place of actually relying on the Holy Spirit right. or relying on what, what Jesus would have me do, but just trying to find my sweet spot wherever that is and, and then filling um, – you know, this need for approval or uh, 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 affirmation from, hey, look at how well you performed. Yeah. Um, and I know that that isn't everybody's story. You know, some people have, have different um, 
upbringings in school or struggle or, or whatever. But I know for me, that was a, a major temptation. And I, and I remember sharing part of the, a story um, on the podcast last season, I think, of just this recognition of how much that had been um, my wiring growing up. And it wasn't that it wasn't, or it wasn't that it wasn't. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I, it wasn't that I couldn't put words together, but I don't know um, how many listeners are grammar nerds. So yeah, yeah. It we was, have yet to be overly corrected with yeah, grammar. So it, I, we I don't mean, know you guys if, try to record. We don't know if there's if they're looking out for that. I'm the worst <laughs> one, and I'm okay with that. I apologize. Thank you for your grace. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, it wasn't that my parents were like laying all this pressure on me mm -hmm. or, or things like that. It was, it was all. It was, a lot of it was internal, mm -hmm. and just this place of always wanting to be right mm -hmm. and always wanting to be the best or always wanting, like having this sort of internal drive of look at what I can achieve, but then having to confront the fact that even at my best, even at the, the, you know, the times where I'm doing my absolute best, that is not enough yeah. mm -hmm. to earn anything of eternal value to earn anything from God. Mm -hmm. And so to, to get to a place where even at the, you know, maybe from the outside looking in, uh, things are going well, you know, I, I graduated, I was a valedictorian, I did all these things, but knowing internally, I'm not in a good place with, with my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then having to wrestle through this season of just like, I need to earn Mm -hmm. that I need to do more work. I need to, I need to read my Bible more. I need to do this. Like I'm trying to lay all these weights on. And I had to come to this realization of, no, that is the opposite of what you've been taught and what you've yeah. been you know, learning in this, in this great church growing up. But there was just the temptation was so readily there to just try to control <clears throat> things through my, you know, ability to understand or my ability to learn or, or, or whatever, all these things that really, honestly, God gave me as gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've started to look at them as mm -hmm. this means to try to, to order my life in a way that I could control. And the beauty of grace is that no matter how much of those things that I can get right, there's, it's never going to be enough just on my own and it's coming boldly to that throne yeah. over and over and recognizing, Hey, look, I'm bringing my best and my best isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And because God is so generous and so gracious, there's, there's grace for those gaps. And it's not even just like, a, Oh, okay. Can I get a little bit of that? And I want to go back and do my own thing. It's mm -hmm. just this constant dance of just walking with Jesus and understanding like, man, I, I need you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You want me to need you. You mm -hmm. want me to live in this this constant state of being connected with you and learning from you and recognizing that I'm not able to do these things on my own. But whenever you empower me through your grace to do these things, it's, I don't. I know it's it's a it almost sounds cliche, but it's so beautiful when we really take the time to consider it and how. Um, and, and when we see it working in our life, mm -hmm. you know, like you, some of the stories you uh, shared um, of just, man, I, when I think through like the time when my, my wife was in a motorcycle accident and she, uh, it, she, like she came out of that season, just like it, it could have been so much worse than it was. And it ended up being this healing moment in our life and in our marriage and, it's just, you know, things haven't really been the same since then. And it's just, um, it's in moments like that where it's completely out of my control. It doesn't matter yeah. how smart I am. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how, you know, spiritual I am. It doesn't matter how how well exercised my faith is. I'm just like in this place of God, I need you. Yeah. And yeah. Um, when we're at the end of that, when we're at the end of our rope and then he shows up in such a big way, um, man, it's overwhelming. Yeah. So the, the yeah. invitation of that is that when, like, what if we could learn to live there without having to be at the end of the rope? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the part of the good that comes out of when extreme things happen or when, um, 
one of those like live or die like if you don't come through i'm not gonna make it the gift we get out of that is that what if we could learn to live every day like not live every day at the end of our rope but recognize that grace that like delivered us in that worst moment is also available every other moment Mm. yeah i think too it's interesting um we because we've talked about the dynamics of our like uh place and birth and family so Mm -hmm. like how much first child you had in your story yeah because (laughs) for me the kind of discovery of the need of grace other than hearing it all the time in the the church i grew up in was completely different from your story (laughs) so you wanting to be this overachiever and like yeah i'm not i was not that at all (laughs) i see i had the view of my older sister being like well she's already like she's perfect. Right. <laughs> so right. I had the opposite of like, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> she's already like mom and dad are happy with her. Right. She's like, I remember one time Lara, uh, sorry. <laughs> one time Lara got a, a C in on some paper and it, she had hid it in her closet. And oh, no. I was that little brother who I'm always spying on her. <laughs> I wired up a walkie-talkie to always be on in her room so I could listen in. I don't know why. Don't ask me. <laughs> Spy Kids was coming out around then, so I was into it. But I, I noticed that she had put that in her closet. And I remember taking that to mom and dad and being like, look. Look at what Lara got. Lara got a C. And they're like, yeah, we know. It's okay. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I get those and you guys are mad. <laughs> like, well, you always get those. <laughs> yeah, okay. We know you can do better. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but I had that all through high school of mm-hmm. like that attitude of, I don't really care. I'm just going to lean on what I'm good at. Mm-hmm. I'm good at making people laugh. I'm good at, you know, singing or whatever it was back then. I don't even remember. Or things that I thought I was good at, maybe. <laughs> um, but I remember leaning really heavily on those on those strengths. And then getting into the real world was when I had my mm-hmm. awakening. Like I'm at a job and I'm either going to do good and, and stay hired <laughs> or I'm going to do bad and continue to not care. And my life's going to be miserable. Mm-hmm. And so I remember having those moments of like, Lord, I need your grace because... I'm not used to living this way. Mm-hmm. I'm not used to trying. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad, but I, and and I don't think I thought that, those episode things. one is real talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, it came to the point where I mean, Jacob and I had had several conversations of like the typical like I'm the kid in the youth ministry who has I have home issues. Mm-hmm. I have you know pride issues. I have. Uh, <laughs> Issues with relationships. We'll <laughs> leave that alone. But uh, I had issues. those issues, issues where he would sit down. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to tell the story. <laughs> tell the story. <laughs> I'll tell the story. I don't remember this. So, so. <laughs> I'll just say a lot of his things, his conversations with me were, you have so much potential. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. like. You can tell the story, yeah, Tyler. Like, what are you trying to say? I am going to tell the story. <laughs> I had to get that out first. But they were good. They were good conversations. This one's just really funny. <laughs> they ended well, I guess. Ellen, look at me now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the Jacob Share podcast. Like, let's look. Let's look in the long range. Yes. Yes. I, I need the laugh track. Give me that I think laugh track. Is it? Oh, oh no, that's not it. You but tried. I tried. That's okay. I don't know. I don't have them labeled. You need to label those. Yeah. <laughs> go for the laugh. Here's the laugh. There we go. There we go. Yeah. There so go. <laughs> I'm in high school. I'm a senior. Uh, I'm a. I'm in the on the basketball team. Jacob's my coach, and I and, and let's also clarify so I've been your youth pastor for, for I mean a number of years. Yeah, this was my first year to coach basketball. Yes, so <laughs> so I'm a brand new basketball coach. And growing up, I watched Jacob play basketball. So I'm like, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna be like, you know, I'm I'm gonna be. I don't know how to explain this. Like You're I just want like to prove Mike. it. Yeah, I'm gonna be like Mike. I'm gonna get those shoes. It's gonna be awesome. But I remember, like, I had a I had major pride issues where I just like I'm the best. I'm gonna be the best. No one's gonna take that from me. Well, there was this one um, this one time. I won't give it a whole lot of context, but I'm in the middle of a practice, and Jacob just comes in. And interrupts the whole thing. This may have actually been my junior year, but which I was not a basketball coach. Was not my basketball coach. 
it was it's fuzzy. It was a, it was a while ago. <laughs> um, but Jacob comes into practice. I'm in the bas- I'm in like we call it the ball closet where you get your basketball before you, before practice. I'm in the ball closet. Jacob just comes right up to me and says, "I need you to come with me." <laughs> so serious, and I'm like, "Oh no." Like, what does he know? What did he figure out? Because, like, I'm like, it could be any number of things. I'm like, don't. So, note to self, don't tell him what you've done wrong. Because it might be something else. <laughs> like, don't get caught. And so, he pulls me, He not just, like, off to the side. He doesn't say a word to me. And he just keeps walking. And we're slowly walking to his yeah, dad's that's office. On, it's on one side of the gym. So yes. there's probably 80 yards of walking. Yeah, something like maybe that. Maybe 100 yards yeah. of walking inside a building. Maybe not that much, but there's 60, 70, 80 It doesn't yards. matter. It's not like a year. It was <laughs> a long walk. <laughs> Complete silence. Doesn't say anything to me. And it's killing me on the inside. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Finally, I realized... He's taking me to his dad's office, oh. which is equally scary yeah. at, to like a 16, 17 year old yeah. kid. Yeah. I had to go to your dad's office once. It was mm. scary. Yeah. Takes me in there. There is a spotlight. There's a spotlight on a chair, on a single chair, like an interrogation. Oh my God. And he tells me, have a seat. I'm like, oh no. I sit down. Do you remember this? I do. Yes. Abs- I absolutely do. I remember what we talked about. I don't remember the, how the conversation. I've. I don't remember everything about the conversation. I remember the Same. topic. And he just he just lays into me. But but that was a pivotal moment for me. Like he he sits in front of me. I can't see him cuz <laughs> there's a light in my I eyes. I forgot that part. <laughs> I can't see him. And I'm just hearing this voice like and it's by myself so I'm only bad cop. Yes. I'm not even I'm not even trying to be good there's cop. There's no good cop. I'm asking the Lord for <laughs> help, like help. Get like bring someone in here, help me out. And like, but I will say like that moment, I don't, again, I don't remember everything that was said, but that moment was incredibly pivotal for me where I, it, I felt like it changed the course of my life. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it was when I started to realize like, you can't, can't stay this way. Now mm-hmm. I'm not saying that moment changed me forever or that it right. set a new trajectory. Exactly. And so there were a few other like micro moments and things like that, that happened along the way. But that was one in particular where someone cared enough to explain grace to me in a way that was like a life or death Mm. scenario. Like, you have to have grace. You need grace. And me starting to understand that as a kid, like, that was what what changed it for me. As funny as that story is to look back on, (laughs) it it literally, it it wrecked me. And that led me to do internship that next year Mm -hmm. for, for the summer. So then I did an internship. That led me to do a uh, youth ministry. That led me to do I mean, it just it was crazy how that one like if you would if you chickened out <laughs> or if you were like, <laughs> I'm not doing this to this kid. <laughs> like, I don't know. It could have it could have been yeah. crazy different. So but yeah, I, it's funny because I come from the exact opposite. <laughs> right. I'm right. like, dude, I'm used to getting in trouble. <laughs> I'm used to <laughs> the exact opposite. Oh, man. I remember like one of the worst conversations I had with my parents was I was in junior high and I had, uh, I had got a C on one of my math plate. It, maybe it was even worse. I may have been a D. I don't know. But um, it was this, what is going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> they thought you were doing drugs. No, <laughs> well, I don't think they thought that, but it was like, he was in junior um, this isn't like you what's going on. And yeah, I, I th- I don't want to paint my parents as like in any sort of bad light because they wanted the best for me yeah. and they drove me to to do well. But yeah, I could. I this is not a humble brag. This is just an honest like evaluation. I could usually like look at the test review sheet two minutes before and ace a test because I just was wired that way. Like I could memorize God. stuff that way, and so I didn't have to work really hard. And so getting into like adulthood, you don't, there's no cheats for life, right? It's not like, oh, okay, let me just go cram whatever I need to know real quick. And then I'm a successful person. Like there's it, I had conditioned myself to try to put the least amount of effort in to get the best result Mm -hmm. because 
I was relying on natural ability. And then I started to think, oh, well, I'm actually pretty good at whatever, it, you know, whatever. And so that self-reliance, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of, mm -hmm. you know, leaning into God's grace, that pattern of like living in that place was, it was, it took a long time even out of, after getting married and being moved out of my parents' house and being an adult to, to mature out of that. And I'm still, you know, that, that's still stuff I have to wrestle yeah. with of like, always trying to 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 find um the thing that i'm good at and and rely on that mm -hmm. rather than okay god what do you want me to do and how do i trust you and live this in relationship with you mm -hmm. and walk with you through whatever you're telling me to do i'm afraid of doing scary things that i'm not sure of i need your grace to help me in this in this season rather than okay i'll just go do the thing that i, yeah. I know I'm, i can do yeah i had to recognize that my pride was in the way yeah. of me receiving grace. And mm -hmm. pride takes different forms. Sometimes yeah. it's arrogance. Sometimes it's shame. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. it's, you know, just embarrassment or, you know, what is the um, insecurity? That's the other, that's mm -hmm. like, there's, it takes so many, it, but it's all self oriented. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. all, it's all when self is at the center. Yeah. It takes a bunch of different forms, but that's bottom line. What pride is, is self at the center. And, there's no way around it. God resists that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter wh who takes that form. It doesn't matter how nice they are normally. There's just resistance for straight from God. And um, people don't usually trust God enough to let that go. Uh, for a lot of people in today's age that need attention, you have to let go of needing to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um like you need to be able to be okay with not being a big deal mm -hmm. to anybody. If, if, because the need to be a big deal to somebody, impress people, get attention, um, any of those kinds yeah. of things, success, success. It, yeah. I mean, just any, anything that puts self forward. That's why most people don't lean into grace is because if I will do this, if I can achieve this, if I can position, my Instagram this way, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can use these kinds of filters, if I can do hashtag no filter, a very specific way, get attention mm -hmm. for my vulnerability. Even people's vulnerability is often pride centered, self-centered. It, it, it's hard to trust God when you need that. And to, when grace makes you feel like I'm not going to be a big deal, I'm not going to get attention. I'm not going to get a promotion. I'm not going to get views, likes, comments. I'm not going to get um, the things that I really want mm -hmm. from people. You won't access grace. You will try and mm -hmm. you will strive and you, that you will, you will end up getting resistance even from God. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the longer you go down that path, the more resistance you get even from God. And <clears throat> most of us just don't want to do that. Most of us would rather figure out how to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, it, that's why I started with a, a, a verse in the series that is not directly using the word grace. John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. Like I keep for years now, keep about a couple times a year, just circle around that for a while. That's like, wow, what are all the things I've been doing? Not consciously, not maliciously, but I've been doing like, okay, God, like I'm obviously weak in this point. Yeah. So like, I really got to rely on your grace, but like mm -hmm. this other thing, like I'm good. I, I I can I can make this work. The number of times I when I'm quote on like as a pastor, mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to be on. You, you're you're connecting to the Lord. You're relying on grace. You, re, you I mean all those things that you train yourself for pastorally, and then there's times where you're off, and you're just kind of a carnal jerk. And I'm like I won't say you in the generic. <laughs> I will say me uh, that like. Well, I don't. I don't have to be around people. I don't have to be ready to pray for people. I can just relax. Yeah. But relaxing isn't rest. It's mm -hmm. more just like I just want to feed my flesh and mm -hmm. I just want to be carnal. Like that. Apart from him, I can do nothing. Or what I said this past weekend about even my strengths mm -hmm. are nothing compared to his grace. Yeah. So even my strengths can be a weakness to him to say, I need your grace. Doesn't matter 
how talented, gifted, uh, anointed mm-hmm. we think we are. Like apart from him, I can do nothing. So even what I'm good at, what I'm strong at, what I have a talent in, even that needs the grace of God. Mm-hmm. And that's it's a hard, it's not a hard earned revelation. It is hard to integrate that mm-hmm. because you have to be aware all the time of all the ways we act in pride. And there's a, a temptation even to try <laughs> to to integrate or to like to put that into practice and by trying sometimes <laughs> where it's like a self defeating thing yeah it's like okay i'm i mean i literally i caught myself uh, the other night like sitting here thinking like man my attitude's kind of been off lately i need to i need to do this mm-hmm. and the my instead of god i need your help i'm in this place i've had a bad attitude i, I I need you. I need your grace. My my instant thing is, what do I need to do to yeah. fix myself? Yeah, and that's not grace. And so, it's, even if you're super spiritual about it, oh, well, okay, what's, like, I'm what's, gonna go what, listen to some what worship discipline? music. I'm gonna implement a new discipline. I'm gonna read this book. I'm gonna, and it's all earning. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I love that quote. I know we've said it multiple times on this uh, on this podcast. Grace is not opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. And so any effort that we put in that is from a place of I'm going to earn something, I'm going to show God how good I am, mm-hmm. I'm going to do these things so that I, that my mm-hmm. that I I can ch- we can't change ourselves. Yep. Oh. Um yeah. And yeah. Man, it's good. it's good to remind ourselves even in a, a podcast that's focused on, you know, intentional living mm-hmm. and uh spend a lot of time on disciplines and hey, yep. this is how you do a prayer habit. This is how you do that. Man, I I've really been not doing super well at my habits in the, and, and in a way, I think it's this rec, like the, in this, in the last little, uh, few seasons, a uh, few weeks. Um, but I, in a way I think it's because, okay, I'm hitting that reset button again. Mm-hmm. I've realized that I started to put more earning into mm-hmm. the equation mm-hmm. and less, uh, less grace. Um, and so I, just yeah. say thank you for listening to God and sharing this awesome series that yeah, you've been, it's been on. Very it's been very helpful. Because yeah, I'm like just catch myself like I'm at night. I, you know, I get to the end of the day, I'm laying down, ready to go to sleep, and I just have this sense of I either of this obligation that mm-hmm. I put on myself of hey, you should really do this, mm-hmm. and and then I'm like I don't want to do that, <laughs> 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 and then. And then it's like, okay, yeah. well now I, if I if I take the attitude, I'll, or I'll just force myself to do it. Then it's like I lost any value yeah. from doing it anyway because I'm trying to do it out of obligation instead of maybe maybe it's not obligation that's telling me I should do that. Maybe that's the Holy Spirit saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. you want to spend some time with me today?" And I'm like, um, <laughs> "Yeah, I know I need to, and I know I ought to, but I need to stop needing and oughting." to do yeah. and i need to just recognize this is an open invitation and a relationship and god sees where i'm at and where my heart's at and where i need to spend some more time with him and not just because i need to spend time with him but because i need his grace mm-hmm. and yeah we have to come boldly to that throne and it's this open invitation Th- this subject honestly probably <laughs> underlies a lot of the subjects we hit mm-hmm. season one that uh, as I would go back and listen to episodes, I realized like I sound way more critical about my upbringing than I intend to, mm-hmm. uh, that often my responses that I grew in my adulthood as a growth from my upbringing might've been reactions, but the way I'm explaining it was I was reacting to the extreme, mm-hmm. but there wasn't a whole culture of the extreme. It was just like a few people that annoyed me that I would react to. Um, and so like, I, I really do honor my upbringing and I don't want to ever dishonor my parents or our church, but um, it, it's like a lot of the things I said about disciplines and, and habits and those kinds of things like that, they actually have to be built on this. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, we mentioned it, we would say it, but like, I really mean it like, those don't work if you don't have at least some measure of a revelation of grace, because otherwise you will turn any discipline, any habit into striving, earning um, a sense of self-righteousness because mm-hmm. you're so awesome and disciplined. 
instead of, and we've, we've said it this way, but like it bears repeating, like disciplines are only as good as they bring you to grace. Mm -hmm. They bring you to the throne of grace. And if they do that, awesome. That's what they're for. And, and, and honestly, you need that because again, going into kind of the extreme, sometimes a, a understanding of grace becomes an excuse for just being lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And that's always been my fear as a communicator is I would see people just quote wing it and say like they're Mm -hmm. relying on grace, but honestly you just didn't want to study Mm -hmm. and you were a little lazy and you're relying on the, the phrase in old charismatic yesterday's (laughs) manna. Um, (laughs) You're relying on a revelation and something God did in you before. (laughs) And you didn't like bring it fresh to the Lord, you were just being lazy and you can call it grace all you want, but you're mm-hmm. just being lazy. Yeah. And I fear that for myself, like, mm-hmm. well, no, I, I got to make sure I'm prepared and I'm, and, and, and all of that's appropriate in the right setting, the right time and in the right motive. And I've found myself here. Like, I got it. I got to I got to get this right. I got to man, these people like, like we, I'm in a culture of grace. Like we need to have this like theologically precise. Yeah. And I and like in my head, seeing where that's rolling. And I'm like, first I'm doing this to impress. I, I would be doing that to impress people that like, I know my grace stuff. Like, cause there's also mm-hmm. the temptation in me. Just, I mean, here we are in the series, just me being vulnerable about everything. <laughs> um, there's sometimes a temptation I have to prove to our congregation that I know my stuff, mm-hmm. that I, 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 I know the things that, you all wonder if I know or not, mm-hmm. um, or that like you're 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 not sure about following my leadership because you don't know where I stand on this or that, and so I have a temptation to sometimes over-explain or communicate something to prove something, mm-hmm. and uh, I have to resist that temptation. And going into the series, it was like just that like, well, you're not going to have a really solid outline, and I'm like, I need a solid outline. <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> grace like this is the thing yeah, that yeah. like we say yeah. marks our church so it's, like it's like there's a panel of judges in the back saying, <laughs> yeah oh he missed that uh-huh. point oh, or yeah. like i go to a scripture and it's like oh i don't know if you interpreted that correctly right. or, or you misapplied that <laughs> right and so like i have those little thoughts that roll around in my head uh, he didn't use his example that his dad always used <laughs> yeah <laughs> He didn't talk about throwing the rocks in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I have to resist that temptation. And then when I have that sense, like, I'm just going to open the Bible and speak, then I also have the like, but like, that's lazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just being lazy. And I had this conversation with the Lord before week one. And it's like, well, are you being lazy? No, but I don't want to be seen as lazy. And it's like, <laughs> so is that about you? Right. Or is yeah. that about me? And it's like, it's about, it's about me. <laughs> <laughs> so you ever so, feel like your conversations with God are a lot of, of that tone? Like, oh, yeah, and then I, I also, and I also <laughs> like, I, 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 I'd never want to set your team back because mm-hmm. your team is the ones that have to do the the nodes. They have to make sure it's online. They have to make sure they do the slides. And like, I always want to give them notes ahead of time. Cause I remember, I remember being those back in easy worship days. Mm-hmm. I remember Ooh. being the one getting my dad's outline on Sunday morning and typing it in easy worship as fast as possible. So like, I remember that I don't mm-hmm. like being that person. I don't want to do that to somebody. So then there's that pressure of like getting it perfect and meticulous, you know, early enough in the week. And I'm like this week, this series, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to get enough ahead of time as yeah. I can. But some of it is about, I'm just going to dwell on these verses. So here's mm-hmm. those verses if you want to just pre-make a couple slides. But I'm just, and, and I'm just going to open the Bible and speak. And so my notes of this series have been very bare. Um, I did not plan any of the examples I've given or the <laughs> analogies. I didn't plan any of those. And so this past Sunday, I'm talking about my own calling and my wrestling of vocation and my own pride. And I start saying it. I start giving that story. And the internal chatter in my head was like, why are you talking about this? <laughs> what have you done? Like, people aren't going to understand this. They're going to they're gonna mishear you. Yeah, they're not going to understand. Offended. They're going to get gonna offended. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, in, in real time, I'm like, it's too late. I just, <laughs> You're right, already Lord, in it, man. I'm in yeah. it. Lord, just please don't make me. Like, I need your grace to not screw this up. To make... <laughs> Because I, I never, even in stories, I never want to make disparaging comments about 
our church, the people of our church certainly don't want to make any disparaging comments about my dad. And I know that sometimes if I don't really think through how to say certain things, it can sound that way. It can sound like I'm being critical or something like that. And, and I, I, I want to do what's right in those moments. And then a lot of times it's like, I'm here. I'm just going to have to rely on grace. And you know what? If I screw this up, if I say something I shouldn't say, or if I tell too much, or if I don't tell the story right, or if it doesn't make sense, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to impress people. Mm -hmm. If it didn't connect, I'll chalk it up. That was in the flesh, and I'll learn, and I'll have to grow. And so I, even in the series on grace, I'm having to wrestle out the process <laughs> of what that means in yeah. real time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not something I hadn't already learned. It's something that has to be reintegrated mm -hmm. one more time. I love that. And I'm, the the other thing um, that has been so interesting in this season of life is learning how to walk that out with my kids. Oh right? gosh, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm remembering conversations that my parents would have with me yeah. when they're addressing stuff or. I remember you, you you telling that story about Jacob having that conversation. With oh you. yeah, dude. Reminded me of a time my mom. She didn't interrogate me like that, but she like <laughs> she she challenged me on some stuff, and it was just sort of this. Oh man, I uh, yeah, my attitude was wrong, and I need I had to repent and and change my my mind and stuff. But the like the moments that we have with our kids and mm -hmm. how 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 much little mirrors they are mm -hmm. and so like with my oldest i see so much of those same tendencies of trying yeah. to earn mm -hmm. trying to gain approval trying to do what she can do to to gain acceptance and i just i look and i i see myself in her so much and i'm just like god how do i how do i parent this yeah. in a way because at some level she's going to have to learn the way i did of yeah you have to be dependent on Jesus. And that's not something you can just teach and just tell. Yeah. It's something you have to model. It's mm -hmm. something that you have to reiterate and, and encourage, but she's going to have to come to that realization and that conclusion within her own working out of her relationship with God. Yeah. And it's something that we all have to do of just like, how do we, how do we get to this place and, circle the wagons as many times as we need to and just keep coming back to this place of oh yeah i gotta surrender mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta put it all down at his feet because i it, it no matter how hard i try it's it, it's mm -hmm. it's never gonna be enough on my own and it's a beautiful thing when that surrender happens and then it's it you know that's when love enters in grace enters in and god is able to do amazing things and then it feels like, and this is maybe me just telling my own story. And it's like six <laughs> months down the road. Oh, here we are again, uh -huh. right back at that same yeah. spot. But it's, um, you know, with our kids, even just like how, how can we find those little moments of yes, discipline, yes, teaching, yes, helping our, our kids grow. But how do we model grace mm -hmm. as well? Like, I, it's little pictures come to mind of like my my youngest not being able to reach the toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Like I told her you need to brush your teeth, but if I don't show up and like help her get to that, mm -hmm. like she needs to, she needs dad's grace in that mm -hmm. moment to like reach over and grab. Mm -hmm. Like there's little moments of like understanding our reliance. We are like children, yeah. Um, in in our reliance on on our father and just understanding, hey. As, as good as we are, as uh, big as we get, or as, as strong as we are, we're, we're kids. Yeah. We're, we're, we're incapable of doing um, all of the things on our own, and we just need God. Yeah, so. I think that's demonstrating humility, demonstrating, because like, uh, I've got all boys, so they think dad's awesome. <laughs> like, I am the best at everything. And there's a few things I'm going to leave and, and I'm going to, I'm going to be the best. <laughs> Don't wisen them up. <laughs> yes. But there's some things where I have to show humility and say, no, actually, mm -hmm. so-and-so they're much better than I am. Uh, for instance, so since I'm saying play guitar, do all that, mm -hmm. all my kids want to talk about sometimes is like dad's dad's, they think I'm famous because I'm on TV because <laughs> of the streaming and stuff. But um, the, we'll hear a song and they'll be like, so we're listening to John Foreman, which is like my all time. And 
Zion is in the car with me. Zion and Ellis are in the car with me, my two oldest. And they both ask, Dad, who is this? And I'm like, this is John Foreman. And they're like, Let me oh, introduce yeah. you, boys. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> now they're obsessed with him, but this was the first introduction. And they were like, are you better than him? And part of me was like, heck yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's the best. Yeah. But the other side is like, no, actually, he's really great. Like everything he does is great. I learn a lot from him. And like mm-hmm. demonstrating that humility mm-hmm. and, and not wanting to be the rock star dad, right, you know, all right. the time. Right. Did, but, they see, did they see Chris? Chris Ferris? <laughs> Little Chris. Uh, yeah, every now and then. Yeah, yeah. We're all friends. Because he's legit. Oh, he <laughs> is a guitar legit. player. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. If it comes to guitar, I submit every time. Like, Chris, I, yeah, no. I come nowhere close to Christopher. I, I always tell, uh, I me- mostly tell people, I get far enough by that I can write the song. Like, Chris can finish the song. Yeah. At, at that point, we're good. So, That's but yeah, I think it's demonstrating those things. Yeah. And I think, too, when mom and dad, I find this or found this especially early on in our marriage, that when you know, she's like in this, just that spot of like, I'm in, I'm doing great. My relationship with the Lord is stronger than it's ever been. She's walking in grace. I'm at my lowest mm. and I'm like, we're completely out of sync. Yeah. Cause I'm like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little brutal sometimes, <laughs> but then I noticed we flip flop where yeah. it's like, uh-huh. I'll get convicted mm-hmm. and be like, man, I need to repent. I'm, I'm like, look at Caitlin. She's doing so awesome. And then I'm, I like come to this place of walking in grace. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, I'm tired of this. (laughs) (laughs) So so it's finding that balance in the household too, of Mm -hmm. like, we're a family who's walking in grace. Yeah. That's a lot more difficult. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. Like I just had a conversation with, with Audrey the other day. I, we were, it was, we woke up a little late. We were, it was a rough morning getting kids ready for school. Recipe for disaster. And we were just snippy at each other. And then I, she, it was so funny. She caught me, um, at, after our huddle, uh, just cause she works with me and she's like, we need to talk. Or like, she's like, we need to have a conversation. That's what she said. Yeah. And, you're and like, I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> In, internally maybe, but I was like, okay, uh, you want to go get coffee or something? And That's Tyler's, That's anyway, Tyler's response. We were going through the drive through and I almost preemptively, I'm like, like, I've been having a tough time and I just start saying, look, this is where I'm at. I've been trying these, these things, but it's not resulting in what I want. And, and, yeah. um, and I just had to repent and say, look, my attitude's not been right. And she's like, yeah, I noticed. <laughs> so, and, uh, but, but it was this mutual repentance and like, yeah, we need to give each other grace. I'm, I asked her, I was like, can you just pray for me and not just be irritated at me? Cause that'll help more. And she's like, yeah, I guess I can do that. <laughs> That's awesome. And, uh, but as we've gotten older, that we're able to kind of recognize that a little yeah. sooner. Mm-hmm. We young, younger, earlier years of marriage, no, we that just, can bruise. Oh. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Underhanded comments and just a week of 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 not enjoying each other's company, and then it finally all blows up at the end, and you're like. And why didn't we just talk? Why didn't yep. we just deal with this earlier? Have some self control, yeah. not just say what's on my mind. Right. Oh, dude, I got uh, Kayla and I talk about this all the time. We got married way too young. Like, <laughs> if we if we just would have gotten married now and realized, like, we needed to grow up a little bit. <laughs> Getting married that young made me realize how quick witted I am. I'm like my mother in that way, oh, and man. I'll just I'll just fire something off, yeah. and in my head I'm like, why did you just do that? Like, you just <laughs> buried self destruct button. <laughs> yep. I'm so bad at that. Oh man. <laughs> so just just so you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to mark dates. This is somewhat related to Grace, but I'm trying to mark dates. When I was gosh, I was um it was the first one of the first years I was ministering on Thursday night in Durant. I was still a youth pastor, but <clears throat> I got some pulpit time. Throw and, the kid uh, a bone, you know, get some pulpit time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's basically what it was. It's like, Everybody you know, else was gone. Thursday, Thursday <laughs> Thursdays, nobody wants to come. And none of our, all of our speakers are previously obligated. Yeah, you can give them, you can take it. And so, like, I'm like, this is my chance. Um, uh, but so, I, I, gosh, was I? So I've been like 24, 25, something like that. Anyway, about a year into that, I had Tim McIntyre. Um, oh, perfect. So 
if you do not go to the Durant campus and maybe a few of our other campuses, you probably don't know Tim McIntyre, but like he's a pillar in mm-hmm. the Durant church. Like he's, he's an elder and uh, you don't see him on stages very often. You don't see him in, in like any kind of like really public way, but he's six, five. Yeah. You can't miss him. Six, five. <laughs> he is a um, jujitsu black belt. Mm-hmm. And so the dude, he might, I mean, I don't know how old he is, but he's hands I mean, like, oh yeah, he's the Chuck he's, Norris of our church. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so him, and this was, oh, gosh, like 12 years ago. Um, and he pulled me into my dad's office. Hey, that's where you got that move. <laughs> even, <laughs> even, even brought a witness. Oh, and he pulled, he pulled me up chair and I was knee to knee with Tim McIntyre and he leaned over and he, was saying, and his first words were like, I'm not stupid. I'm like, I never thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> and he's like, I know where this is going. And I want you to know, I, I think you got it, but there's things you don't got and you need. And he started work like showing me like the things that if you're going to earn people's trust, if you're going to become who God's made you to be, this is what needs to happen in your life and you can't do it. So you're going to have to figure out how to do it by grace. And so, yeah, and it, and it, awesome. and it set a trajectory for my life of just like, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not that awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I can't just earn it. Um, yeah. I know the feeling. With people. So <laughs> you do. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember if that happened before I did that to yeah. you or, or if after, was... or if I, I, I reaped what I sowed. <laughs> I don't know. It's possible. I, I hope feel you like... reap what you sowed. <laughs> <laughs> what what would you have been a junior twelve years ago? To, I mean, it would have been at least eleven years yeah. ago. Yeah, because I graduated years eleven years ago. So so maybe <laughs> it's probably like a week later. <laughs> <laughs> that is possible. This is the next uh, day. Just, it, it, it is one of the most important conversations I've ever had in my life. Someone that was not a parent, someone yep. that wasn't even a staff member mm-hmm. or a quote mentor, but who loved me and who believed in me, but was not gonna let me be egotistical and arrogant and just think i could just do whatever i want Um, that's awesome though but it was it was a pivotal point in my life and it was a definitely a humbling moment it's awesome to have people (laughs) who are willing to speak into our lives like that oh yeah and are willing to have tough conversations uncomfortable interrogation (laughs) conversations (laughs) (laughs) it was love (laughs) <laughs> I, oh, I'm thankful now. In the moment, I it w- it took me about a week to get over. Like that week, I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk to Jacob. <laughs> I didn't want to go to youth the next week, yep. or- and I had to run sound, so there's no choice. <laughs> oh, you had to put man. up my cards. Yep. You got <laughs> five minutes, cards, Jacob. Five minutes. We're negative, negative five, five minutes, Jacob. Negative ten. We're negative twenty minutes, negative Jacob. Twenty. And Jacob's just over here, just listening to the. Oh yeah. yeah. In his head. <laughs> <laughs> Youth ministry uh, never got a lot of claps. Was it, was it more like this? Well, if we knew. <laughs> yes. You're just having fun now. Yeah, I'm just playing with the soundboard. Maybe we should wrap up this yeah. episode. I will say, I, I will say, there have been two of those conversations that Jacob has had with me. One of them I forgot about until just now, but uh, there's been two. And they were both very pivotal and very important in my life. So I'm, I'm thankful. Was if I've I, never told you that, I'm very thankful for welcome. those conversations. I love you. I love you as well. Was it at Panera? Uh, maybe Did there we go was to three. Panera? Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were in your office that you never used in the Sherman youth room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. I got okay. sat down for that one. Mm. Yeah, that was not fun. Do you remember this? <laughs> that one's cloudy. This is the last story. That one's cloudy. We got to set the mood. Here we go. All right. Oh, it was too short. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry. All right. I'll stop pushing buttons. This is the last one. Last story. Last Shut one for today. So Jacob comes to Sherman. He hasn't been there in a long time. Like he's not the youth pastor there anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm the worship leader. And I'm excited that Jacob's coming down. I would recently done a piece of stupid. I don't even, I, I probably think about what it was, but I don't remember. And I'm lead, I lead worship, I come down. Jacob gets up and speaks. And like, I don't know what came over me, but for some reason, I remember it's kind of embarrassing now, but I remember I was like over, uh, 
what's the word? Like in the crowd, like, amen. Like, that's good. I never, ever <laughs> am that person. And for some reason, I'm really engaged with this message. Right. And it's because it was prepared for me. <laughs> Actually for me. And then afterwards, he has a, a, another conversation with me and even tells me. Uh, so I still have the CD of this. I got to find it. To oh, the box. God. But uh, he said, what I spoke tonight was for you. I want you to get the CD. I want you to name it Anti-Venom. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to listen to it again. <laughs> So good. Anyways, that's a great one. I love oh, that Oh, my one. God. Yeah. Oh, so all you youth pastors out there. You can't do that anymore. No. You can't do that kind of stuff anymore. Get away with that anymore, but <laughs> but it was great. It was oh, helpful. Man. Dear Lord. Well, it's episode one of season two is in the books. Yeah, and I feel like we opened up a lot more than we had in season one. Yeah, we just feel more connected yeah. to yeah the listeners. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, if you guys enjoyed that and uh, you liked that, please leave a comment. Let us know. Leave a review on iTunes. Those are very helpful. And uh, man, they sure. Uh, they sure are encouraging. They really are. We we recently received one that was very encouraging, and it it was it was awesome. Yeah, very helpful. We've enjoyed greatly putting this podcast together, and I'm excited for this next season. Uh, we'll we've been uh, making some tweaks. You know, we only have one camera shot this time. There may be some episodes this season that we don't have video at all, um, and that's totally fine. We're the intent is to be able to record more. And put mm -hmm. more out there. So we're mm -hmm. scaling back on some of the video production and uh, bringing in the soundboard and fun stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, guys, I just want to be a DJ. <laughs> That's all it is. I want to have I want to have control and push sound effects. And everybody said. <laughs> okay. All right. Take it away, Tyler, before I, I ruin all this. Right. More. Thank, I, I will. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you oh, for gosh. listening. Thank you for watching whatever you were doing, whether you watch this on YouTube or you're listening on whatever podcast device or service that you get your podcast. We appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.